Hi guys, welcome to this 16th tutorial in this series of programming PIC microcontroller with MPLAB XC8 compiler. This is part 2 of the interrupt tutorial. In part 1, we learned how to program the external interrupt on port B0, B1 or B2. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to program the peripheral interrupt. A peripheral interrupt is an interrupt generated internally by the peak microcontroller peripheral. This could be generated by the peak analog to digital module, the USART module, the comparator, and so on. In part 1, we said there are 10 registers which are used to control interrupt operations. These registers are ARCON, INTCON, INTCON2, INTCON3. PIR1, PIR2, PIE1, PIE2, IPR1, and IPR2. In part 1, we use the INTCON, the INTCON2, and the INTCON3 registers to control the external interrupt. In this part 2, we're gonna use some other registers to control the peripheral interrupt. This is a data sheet of the PIC18. 4520 series. We also learned that the interrupt source of 3 bit to control the operations, the flat bit to indicate that an interrupt event has occurred. This bit has a name ending with IF. There is an enable bit which allows to enable the interrupt. This bit has a name ending with IE and there is a priority bit to select the high priority or low priority and this bit has a name ending with IP. The INTCON registers, as we have learned, are readable and writable registers which contain various enable, priority, and flag bit. In INTCON 1, we've got this 8 bit. Bit 0 is RBIF, which is RB port change interrupt flag. If this flag is 1, it means at least one of the RB7 to RB4 pins have changed status. Bit 1 is int OIF, which is an external interrupt flag bit. If this bit is 1, it means int 0 or port RB0 external interrupt is occurred. The int con bit 2 register is the timer 0 overflow interrupt flag. Bit 3 is RBIE, which is RB port change interrupt enable bit. If you want to enable the interrupt on port B change. Bit 4 is int OIE, which is int O external interrupt enable bit. If you want to enable the interrupt on port B0. Bit 5 is timer 0 overflow interrupt enable bit. And bit 6 is the PIEE which is a peripheral interrupt enable bit. This is the bit that we're gonna use to enable the peripheral interrupt. If this bit is set to one, then it's gonna enable all the peripheral interrupt. And if this bit is set to zero, then it's gonna disable all the peripheral interrupt. And lastly, bit seven is the global interrupt enable bit. If this bit is set to one, then it's gonna enable all the interrupt. In INTCON2 interrupt control registers, we've got also 8 bit. There's nothing much that concerns us in this register for this tutorial. And in INTCON3 interrupt control register, these are the bits that are used to control the various interrupt. There's nothing much that concerns us in this register for this tutorial. But what is more important for us is the PIR register. The PIR registers contain the individual flag bits for the peripheral interrupt. Due to the number of peripheral interrupt sources, there are two peripheral interrupt request flag registers, PIR1 and PIR2. In PIR1, we've got the following bit. Bit 0 is timer 1 overflow interrupt flag bit, bit 1 for timer 2, bit 2 is for CCP1 interrupt flag, bit 3 is for master synchronous serial interrupt flag, bit 4 is transmit IF 
which is a USAR transmit interact flag. And bit 5 is RCIF, which is a USAR to receive interrupt flag. If the USAR module of the PIC microcontroller receive any data, then this flag is going to be set to 1. And when the USAR module transmit any data, then this bit, bit 4 is going to be set to 1. Bit 6 is ADC converter interrupt flag. And lastly, bit 7 is parallel slave port read write interrupt flag. This is the second part of the peripheral interrupt request flag, the PIR2. This is the PIE register. The PIE register contains the individual enable bit for the peripheral interrupt. If you want to enable any peripheral interrupt, this is the register to use. To enable the USAR to receive interrupt, bit 5 must be set to 1, which is RCIE, TXIE. To enable the transmit interrupt, ADIE to enable the ADC converter interrupt, and so on. PIE to contain the rest of the peripherals. And lastly, the IPR register contains the individual priority bit for the peripheral interrupt. If you want to set the priority levels of your peripheral interrupt, then the register to use the IPR register. You've got bit for different peripheral like for the ADC if you want to set the ADC converter interrupt priority to 1 this is the bit to set which is bit 6 which is ADIP the TXIP is for the USAR transmit priority if this bit is set to 1 then the priority is going to be high but if it's set to 0 then the priority is going to be low and so on in this tutorial we're going to create a simple project to blink an LED D1 connected to RB4 at an interval of one second, but when the peak receives a specific data on the USART module, then it's gonna jump to the interrupt routine, which in this case is gonna be to blink fast D2 five times, which is connected to RB5. So let's go to MPLab XC8 and write our code. Config.c file is our configuration bit settings. We're gonna use an external oscillator, 8 MHz external oscillator. The external reset circuit, MCLR pin is enabled. And basically the rest of the configuration is standard, as we have learned in the previous tutorials. In our interrupt C main file, we've configured port B as an output pin because we're gonna connect our LEDs on port B. This just to configure all port with analog functions as digital because we're not gonna use any analog pin. This to disable all the comparators. This is to configure our USART module as we have learned in the RS232 serial communication tutorial. The first thing we're gonna do, the USART transmit, we're gonna set it to off. We're not gonna use the interrupt on transmit. We're gonna set our interrupt on receive on. Because if our peak receives any data, then the interrupt is going to be raised. We're going to use the asynchronous mode. The transmission width, we're going to set it to 8 bit. The transmission mode, we're going to set it to continuous transmission. And the board rate, we're going to set it to high. This 25 is the SPBRG for the board rate of 19,200. For more information, you can go back to to our RS232 serial communication tutorial. This is what is going to interest us the most in this tutorial. These are the bits that are used to enable a peripheral interrupt. We're going to start with the PEIE. If this bit is set to 1, it's going to enable the peripheral interrupt. As you know, a serial port is also in a peripheral interrupt. Whether you are using a USAR interrupt, or analog to digital interrupt or any other peripheral interrupt this bit must be set to 1 and specifically to specify that you're gonna use the USART receive interrupt then you must set this RCIE bit to 1 this is gonna enable the RX which is a USART receive interrupt if you wanna set the priority bit we decided to, to set the priority bit at low priority and this bit RCIF, which is the flag interrupt, we're just going to reset it. 
and this is just to enable the master interrupt when our project starts we're gonna send a message to the usart welcome to studentcompanion.co.za day and on the second line we're gonna send the message press one for the interrupt routine led on rb5 to flash basically if you press one then interrupt routine will kick in which is gonna be to flash first an LED connected on, on RB5 then before we do anything we'll have to check if the USART is not busy this is the function that is used to check busy USART if the USART is not busy then we're gonna send the first string with TX data 1 to display welcome student companion .co and after 500 milliseconds we're gonna check again if the USART is not busy then we're gonna send the second message which is gonna display press 1 for the interrupt routine LED on RB5 then after 500 milliseconds then we're gonna go into a while one loop and this loop basically it's gonna be our main program whatever our peak microcontroller is gonna do normally in this case we're gonna flash on and off an LED connected on RB4 so the delay is gonna be one second for on and one second for off if there is no interrupt this is what our peak microcontroller is gonna be doing flashing on and off this LED connected on RB4 but when we receive any interrupt if this flag RCIF flag becomes one then we are gonna jump to our interrupt routine this is how we will declare an interrupt routine as you have learned in the previous tutorial you just declare void interrupt and the name of your interrupt so the first thing we're gonna say we're gonna check if an interrupt has occurred if there is something on our receive usart buffer then the rcif bit is gonna be one you could say pir1 bit because this rci1 is in pri1 register but if you think you're gonna forget about the register you can just write RCIF then the compiler is gonna automatically know which register that's supposed to be selected so if something has occurred if you have received some data on our search module then this flag is gonna become one so if this flag equals to one we're gonna say data that is just our variable then we're gonna read our usart module and store the value into the data variable then we're gonna echo back whatever we received so that it can be displayed back to our usart terminal right usart we're gonna write data which is whatever we received if we received one if data equals to one basically means we're gonna ignore all the other characters but if we received a one then we're gonna go to our interrupt routine which in this case we're gonna flash five times this is the for loop we're gonna switch on an led connected to b5 on after 300 millisecond we're gonna switch it off then after 300 millisecond we're gonna switch it on again five times and after five times we're gonna clear our flag bit to zero the program is gonna jump back to the normal routine which in this case to blink on and off an LED connected to B4. Let us build our program and run our simulation. Build. Okay, build successful. Let's go to our simulation. Run. As you can see, the first message welcome to student companion.co.za day, and on the second line says press 1 for the interrupt routine LED on RB5 to flash. You can see our main program. It's flashing on and off D1 which is connected to RB4. If I send let's say 3, 4 or any other character nothing will happen. The microcontroller is going to continue to do whatever it's busy doing. Which is in this case it switch on and off D1 at an interval of 1 second. But if I send a 1 immediately it's going to stop whatever it's doing and start the interrupt routine. Which in this case was to flash fast D2. And after that routine is gonna go back to its normal operation. If I write anything else, nothing will happen. But if I press a one, then the interrupt routine will kick on immediately, stopping whatever it was busy doing. Whether it was off, it's gonna remain off. 
and start the interrupt routine we, because an interrupt routine is a priority whether it was on it's gonna remain on and go to the interrupt routine because the interrupt routine is a priority thank you guys for watching this tutorial I hope we have learned how to use the interrupt this same procedure can be used to for any other peripheral interrupt whether it's analog to digital converter or a comparator or any other peripheral interrupt these are the only bits that you need to declare the first bit is to enable the peripheral interrupt then you have to enable your specific interrupt if you're gonna set the interrupt on usar to receive then this is the bit to set RCIE must be equals to 1 if you're gonna set it on transmit then it's gonna be TXIE and so on then you can select your priority whether it's gonna be high priority or low priority then you have to check your flag bit if an interrupt occurs this bit is gonna be set to 1 then you can decide to do whatever you're gonna do when an interrupt occurs and after an interrupt routine then you have to remember to clear this flag Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.